Hello SGD, Sacred Geometry Decoded. This will be part two in the series looking at Core 7 and the evidence for lost ancient high technology. Why I'm using Core 7 is because all the features of Core 7 uh, can be used to reflect all the other drilling, coring examples uh, found in Egypt. This is basically the cornerstone, one of the main cornerstones of the whole lost ancient high technology slash ancient aliens argument. And as far as granite core drilling goes, it is the, the prime example, which is always constantly referred to uh, ad nauseum, hours and hours of you know, research into this. So that's why Core 7 this is part two. Linked in description to part one, where I showed that the tapered core of Core 7 actually proves that hand tools were used, proves that hand tools were used, and so eliminates uh, ancient advanced precision lost high technology. This is absolutely proven. Here are some of the cores I've drilled myself. I'll link in the description other people who have drilled cores and get exactly the, everyone who has drilled a core by hand gets the same, the same result except for one person. And in that, in that video, I described the fact that this one ancient lost high technology experiment that has been done in regards to granite core drilling has actually been falsified. And that can be shown, the, the results speak volumes. Multiple independent Easily repeatable, cheaply repeatable experiments show the tapering is pure evidence of primitive technology, except for one example. And if there is an well, okay, that'll be that's again in part one. So tapering cores, just again, not an issue. It's not case closed. It is absolute proof of primitive techniques. Just you can links in the description. You can do this for yourself and prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt but it, it's just case closed on that. Uh, so it can't be said that I'm arguing against claims that have been abandoned. Here are some recent videos uh, in regards to this. In recent times, these are the more popular ones and, and I keep getting, you know, people send me this, oh, you need to watch this to be educate yourself and stuff like that. Well, okay, so here's the examples. In these videos and these talks, you clearly hear them make certain claims against, you know, the establishment is ignoring these, suppressing these, blah, blah, blah. Of uh, others and myself, have, you know, w w uh, the truth is censored by truth seekers. Just to put it bluntly, uh, the lost ancient technology industry, and I call it an industry because they, it is these multiple. You know, it's you can even see, especially on the the two on the left hand side, that it's 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 like the same company. Like, um, who runs it? It's obvious how in cahoots let's say that uh, these are and you can just see again in the imagery like the you know whoever's doing the, the graphics work it's obviously you know, okay but granite cores remains one of the cornerstones of the ancient aliens lost high technology industry and industry it is uh, it's a very lucrative lucrative industry in both the commercial media and the internet realm now despite their protestations they are they are anything but suppressed Although they use this appeal to victimhood, and it is a very powerful marketing ploy, but it is simply untrue. How can anyone, you know, if you've been on the internets, you'll see that these are so heavily promoted by the machine, by the algorithm, in mainstream media. It's so promoted, um, this particular argument. So, again, they are, we're being suppressed. Well, <laughs> that, come on. Yeah, okay. Um, Chris Dunn is is frequently cited as an expert source in in the ancient aliens lost high technology industry it is indeed it is something of a backbone to this industry since they all refer to his work and proclaim it to be fact based on the argument from authority or argument to authority logical fallacy i'm not picking low hanging fruit this is not smaller youtube channels or just you know people looking into things they, they make definitive claims of what is true, what is possible, what is scientific. It is a multi-million dollar industry. Uh, it relies on the work, especially of Chris Dunn. And they have set the tone by accusing all, you know, of nefarious activity. Essentially, they've accused other people of criminal uh, actions in some sense in regards to suppressing technology. And again, um, try and get them to address the reality of what has been done and let's see if you're not hidden or blocked or just ignored. Uh, you won't see them address any of these experiments um, and when they do except for the one by Chris Dunn which you can see down here they do it in a very sneaky cheeky uh, way they don't really look into it they don't go into the, the deeper works they just keep showing this one video 
of Chris Dunn, which goes back some 20 or 30 years, but all the other material which they are very aware of, since they, again, hide, delete, or block um, people who propose this, even in a polite way. So you won't see this addressed by ancient aliens, lost high technology industry. The things they, they claim have not been investigated, have not been experimented. They claim it's being suppressed by the establishment. But now, previously, you really had to go and read dull texts and to, to get the idea of it. It isn't necessary anymore. More and more people uh, previous to me, and now I've you know freed myself, you know, red-pilled myself of this um, nonsense, and I, I, I've done the experiments, repeated other people's experiments. So I get exactly the same results. Multiple independent experiments. They can be easily reproduced by anyone out there. They're very cheap to do. And these ones don't require you to go through years of training. Links to these videos will also be in the description. This is just the images, but you will find the videos literally showing you how to do it, explaining the process. Not a problem. It's been done, but you, of course you won't see this. Uh, these types of drills are based on the archaeological record. Again, this claim, it's not, not, it's not in the archaeological record. It does it, Well, that is just untrue. So either they're lying to the fact that they know what's in the archaeological record, or they're lying to the fact that they know it is, but yet they suppress it. So again, they accuse others. Well, you know, what's good for the goose, good for the gander. It's really in 101 study text. It's not in obscure, like again, with the internet age and search engines, really this, you can really find these really easily. And it is um, uh, mystifying the incompetence in regards to the research or not so mystifying the uh, monetary aspect of why it's so important to suppress this information while accusing others of suppressing information. So tapering, absolutely sorted, case closed on that. So what about the striations? Really, okay, grooves, let's call them grooves. Now there's the depth of the grooves, there's the supposed helical spiral, the polished surface, and look, and again I'll refer to Chris Dunn and refer to Petri. Matthew Flinders Petri did not, absolutely did not promote lost ancient high technology will look at his claims uh chris dunn does so this video will be the depth of the grooves absolutely not a problem at all so again core seven is the the cornerstone of the cornerstones in regards to this granite drilling argument therefore it's impossible therefore lost high ancient technology slash ancient aliens depending on what side of the uh, fence they sit on in that particular group now we can, that's core seven. We can see these grooves here. Now these deep grooves are impossible. Well, no, <laughs> not at all. What did Matthew Flinders, William Matthew Flinders Petrie, actually say on the depth of the core drills? Now I'll link this paper as well, 1983 Penn State paper. The promoters of lost ancient high technology use this one and very carefully a, a, um, redact important features of it, misrepresent what the paper is trying to say. This paper does not deal with the helical spiral. It is really a study into what abrasives leave what type of marks on drilling red granite. So uh, again, they're not trying to reproduce ancient techniques. So I'm really looking at it in a more very dry sense. What are the scratch marks basically left by different abrasives? That was the point of the paper. And the first page of the paper, they show this um, discussion between Alfred Lucas and Matthew Wynn. Um, Flinders Petrie in regards, they were both famed uh, Egyptologists and they had this ongoing discussion in regards to the method for core drilling and the depth of the grooves. Now neither one of them disputed that you could do it, they were arguing over the smaller details of how it was done. Now we'll look at that. So Alfred Lucas, who I would say was more familiar with the primitive, uh, you know, again primitive uh, techniques of Stone Age people and again st who would know stone better than Stone Age people this is just one of those tra like to call them primitive Stone Age people well primitive Stone Age people would have a hell of a lot more understanding of how to work with stone than m modern people dealing with uh, Wi-Fi for instance but in his opinion it was a loose abrasive finely ground quartz uh, using wet sand, loose quartz sand, which occurs in great... So basically just loose abrasive, just put some sand down and drill. Okay. Uh, it is highly probable that the pieces of abrasive would have been forced into the metal where they would have remained for some time and produced the same effect as intentional and permanent ones. 
uh, previous videos I'll link mine in description when you drill with a with a copper drill the abrasive gets embedded into the copper and it becomes something like sandpaper so those links will be in a description like again he was correct in in this particular sense uh, Petri counters counters the cutting of granite was done by jeweled tubular drills with cutting points of emery set in the sides of the tube both inside and out every mechanic who has examined the grooves on a core of red granite from Giza agrees that nothing but a fixed point drill could have cut such stones. Petri also says it seems physically impossible that any particle of a loose powder could have become so embedded in a soft metal by the mere accidents of rubbing that it could bear the immense, immense strain immense strain needed to plow out a groove of any considerable depth in such a hard material as quartz, which quartz is the what gives granite its hardness on most scar. So every mechanic who has examined the grooves okay, on a core for red granite from Giza agrees that nothing but a fixed point um, could have cut such grooves. Well, a quick point on that. The mechanics of Petri's time were more like, the, like a just compare a modern carriage maker car to an old school carriage maker car. They both make carriages. One's horse drawn, one's got a motor, but they worked in different times and periods. An appeal to authority of someone from the a modern era simply does not really apply to understanding primitive techniques. The mechanics of Petri's time were not ex were not drilling with copper and, and so forth. They really didn't. This was at that time they were moved onto a whole new type of technologies. So even though they were experts in masonry let's say of their time they were not experts in masonry of ancient times a watchmaker of the 1800s a master watchmaker would be lost in in a modern factory or vice versa so beware of the argument or the appeal to authority logical fallacy so alfred lucas he just basically said loose abrasive was enough to to cut this core petri says we needed fixed points that basically chunks you know like diamond was embedded into the drill that was the only way to do it. Petri was wrong. The mechanics Petri referenced were wrong. This can be shown very easily. The deep grooves are, in fact, very possible. Um, okay, you know, modern diamond drills, this is what Petri said, modern dr diamond drill cores are clumsy smudge work compared to Egyptian cores. Uh, pyramids and temples of... So, 1883, diamond tools were... Uh, 1862 so by that time they were quite new uh, they were using a different technique at that time you can pause to read this but the main point is that it wasn't until 1940 that impregnated diamond grit saw blades were put into operation this was a couple years before Petri's death and years after these papers and, and letters were written so what Petri was writing at the time as modern diamond drills were actually so well, out, outdated by you know, the time of his death uh, things had moved along so these types of things were modern you know you can't compare these two what was modern in Petri's time has moved along to what is modern now so that's a relative term just to be cautious of that and the drills that they were using were more were pneumatic drills electric drills had been invented but what miners uh, quarrymen were uh, masons were using were basically jackhammers type of drills so again you know apples and oranges but Petri was wrong in regards to fixed point abrasives but uh, fixed point jeweled diamond copper uh, drills being necessary to do it. it it's just like it's been done by other people I've done it myself here is a, uh, here's a result of and again links in the description scientists against Smith channel and some of their papers they also this is from one of the published papers on tubular free abrasives deep cores are just not a problem there's one of my own you can see that so on um it's 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 you can just do this this was the first core that i attempted to drill are you um and you'll see that's the video so in that video i show what i did wrong and how to avoid these things but again my first attempt and i got deep cuts in there as well it's actually very easy to do and the reason why i also show is because in that paper um, principles of tubular free abrasive drilling there's a link I'll put that in the description as well in this uh, paper 
again, scientists against Smith Channel also sh have shown a video of uh, one of their drilling experiments. Very interesting paper, lists many important things, but also see whether it's large core drilling, flywheel drilling, bowwheel drilling, again, small and larger cores, and they just get the deep grooves. It's just not a problem, but uh, an interesting, again, link will be in the description. Uh, also, what I find interesting, so they show the result of the first experiment with bow drilling. Now, I find that very interesting because my first experiment with a flywheel drill because I was a noob, I didn't know the, the, uh, you know, the, the finer details of it. My technique was very poor. I was very impatient as well. And I also got an elliptical core. Same type of early mix mistakes and then the same successful results later on. As opposed to the single experiment, uh, which I'll link from the Giza Power Plant, Chris Dunn official website, which is from a chapter in one of his books. He done one exp Again, uh, very, very dubious of that. And just the fact that there's only been one experiment and this one failed, ex which failed to replicate these features. Oh, therefore, you know, my one experiment failed, therefore it can't be true. Well, okay, that's just not, you know, he calls him he's not an experimentalist if you're, if you're doing that. It's quite poor. So it's deep grooves in granite. It's very simple. Just use the same primitive drilling techniques that gave the tapering, which again, Chris Dunn failed to achieve. Um, so again, he, he must have used a machine. He says he consciously wobbled it. Again, that's in part one, but that's that's busted, you know what I mean? That that uh, That's just a fake result anyway. It's very easy. You just use the same technique that gives us this tapering, which is again, just uh, absolute proof of primitive hand tool techniques. Again, the tapering. And to get the larger... Um, deeper grooves you just use a larger grit free loose abrasive it's you don't need diamonds embedded into the drill point just you just do not uh, here's an example of some of the grit uh, that I was using so one of it like an easy way to get grit now aluminium oxide or corundum is an ancient abrasive but uh, one of I also use sandstone but I also use white quartz so if you want to try this experiment at home, just a very easy way is to get some sandpaper. Um, if you want to remain true to ancient techniques, make sure it's aluminium oxide or corundum. You can just burn the paper or the cloth off the back, run it through a sieve to get out the, the, the muck and the dust, wash it, and that, that's 40 grit. 40 grit is pretty much the uh, what most hardware is, the most, they describe it as very coarse. When it comes to granite drilling, I think of it as very fine. But this is the course, it's the roughest sandpaper you'll get at most hardwares, 40 grit. To get larger grit, I either had to, well, I got a masonry disc made of aluminium oxide and I just broke it up into little pieces. And that's an examples of some of the uh, grit that I just, again, make sure again it's aluminium oxide or corundum, whether it's synthetic or natural doesn't really matter, it's the same thing. Uh, or just white quartz pebbles such as these. So you, you you know, um, I don't, at least in Australia and here in Sydney, we, like, you, you can't walk uh, a few houses without finding some sort of garden that has this type of white quartz, white quartz pebble in there. White quartz will absolutely drill um, granite, just, at, just a simple fact, it's just will. Sand, crushed sandstone, river sand, um, beach sand, desert sand will absolutely drill through granite. Um, I, I'll try to remember to link those in the description. That just that is just a simple fact, absolute truth, and it is not a new. This has just been known since antiquity, um, and, but yet we'll cover that later. But that's if you want to drill, if you want to make the deeper grooves, very cheap to get a copper drill, very cheap to get a branch. You'll see the pitch, the pitches, just find a branch like that. You can put it in there. Links will be in the description to these how-to videos. You can like very easy, very cheaply test this for yourself it's absolute it's just fact it's just proven no doubt to it again you can prove it it's science it's repeatable experiments but what is grit well grit size is basically the you know again the very fine sandpaper has a very small grit rough sandpaper has you know larger grit so again that's 40 grit that's just by burning the sandpaper the most coarse sandpaper you could find at the local hardware here or again, you can make your own by crushing up stones and make sure it's a stone that's got quartz in it. Or you know, go to the crystal shop and get some quartz stone. That's another way to do it. But 40 grit is, well, um, half, a, so 0. Uh, US and, and UK standards will vary slightly, but basically 
40 grit is half a mil. So the grains are, they, they put them through a sieve, through a mesh. That's what mesh grit. They run them through a, a sieve, and that's how they separate separate out the different sizes. Number 40 is about 0.42 mil or 0.0165 inches. That's 420 microns. That's the most coarse one that you should be able to get from most hardwares. Um, you can get this larger grit size that has been put through a mesh on the market, but you, again, you can make it yourself um, in all sorts of ways. You can just get granite crush it up. I did a video recently on fire setting. A very easy way to make granite dust, which will give you the material you need to drill into granite, is just put it in a campfire, heat it up, pour water on it, heat it up again, pour water on it, and within two or three times it should already be cracking, breaking down to nothing. You just It's very easy to repeat. With a stone hammer, with a copper tool, you can just make granite dust very easy. But, but you, of course, you, um, a little bit trickier to make larger grit sizes. But Abrasives absolutely work on, on drilling granite. Uh, if you want to get a copper tube and again test this for yourself, no doubt about it that this works. Multiple independent repeated experiments. Um, you need a larger grit size if you're getting it off the off the shelf. You know, look for number ten, maybe up to number six. By number six, you're probably getting a little bit too large. Um, it'll be a difficult bit, more problematic to to drill with. But yeah, anywhere from number ten, even you could go up to well. That's just a rough guide. Again, you can just sort of break it up um, at home using an uh, aluminium oxide masonry disc. You can also get silicon carbide, essentially the same thing, but uh, corundum aluminium oxide was definitely used in by ancient Egyptians and across antiquity. So 40 grit, yeah, that's your largest very coarse sandpaper. Um, pretty much, yeah, get the coarsest you'll find. 60 grit. When we'll, in the next video, I'll come to that because the next feature is why was um, Core 7 polished? We'll get again. That's it's cringe um, in regards to that. So it is just some idea. You know, different sandpapers. Again, you can just burn off the paper or the cloth. It's just a really easy way to get it. Uh, you can again buy it in buckets or satchels with with, with it in there as well. I just made my own. Um, so 80 grit. And we'll get to the you know 80 grit nail file. Now, what They'll often, emery is another name for corundum. Corundum or aluminium oxide is the uh, same thing as sapphires and rubies, but it's not, corundum is not a sapphire or a ruby, but it's made of the same thing, aluminium oxide. Another name for that is emery. Emery is just aluminium oxide that comes, that is not in its pure form. It's usually mixed with other minerals in there. But nail files are often referred to as emery boards or, or sandpaper, which is called emery paper or emery cloth. So that's a, a good abrasive to use, but again, not necessary, just quartz, sand is more than enough. But 80 grit is the coarsest nail file you'll get on the market. 240 grit is the finest type of nail file you'll get on the market, according to uh, this website. Um, now, when you get down to 240, or let's say 230 here, that's 0 0.063 microns. That grit is... 63 microns. Now, what is 63 microns? Vellus hair, peach fuzz, baby hair is somewhere between 110 and 150 microns. So that's how thin it is. That's, that's how small these particles are. The smallest piece of dust that you should see with, you know, with a work, you know, a good human naked eye is 25 microns. So 80, um, sorry, those grid is so fine, so two of them, if you were to cut it in half, would essentially be invisible. So that's the type of grits, um, we'll get to that because it's that Penn State experiment and also have a Chris Dunn one, why wasn't my core sanded? Well, we'll get to that in, in the next episode, but just an intro. So uh, deep grooves, not a problem, absolutely not a problem. You can do this, test it for yourself. Shame on the lost ancient high technologists for not doing a single experiment for all the hours and hours of travel and video editing and promoting and business and organizing tours. I haven't done literally anything. It's it's uh, cringe. That's all the way you can say it. You, know, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So again, you can easily test these primitive techniques and a larger grit size gets these deep grooves it's just not an issue it's and to bring it up in terms of like it's a question mark lost ancient eye technology cringe just absolute cringe uh, deep grooves are not evidence of any sort of lost high technology Petri I'm not uh, who did not promote lost high technology he simply was saying 
that either emery or diamond was embedded into the tube and it had to be embedded in there to do this he was just wrong um you know it, this was not his bag he was not you know he knew a lot about pot shards and and hieroglyphs and he really knew his business in terms of of those features but you know he was a gentleman scholar he was not a hands-on type of guy the mechanics he referred to were these ancient techniques had not been used and they obviously the mechanics he referred to were not familiar with the work of um alfred lucas or again and then in later times other people who did experiment experimental archaeology wrote papers on it absolutely sort of prove this as well but of course now you need to do a video in the internet age to do it you know let's not bother reading anything because it's of course they're mainstream archaeologists therefore you know like they must be corrupt you know they must be hiding something because we're being oppressed we're being suppressed so case closed on that so just like the tapering absolutely provable testable easy to do for it verifiable just not a not an issue at all uh these so deep grooves do they require diamond level technology, whether it's embedded or loose abrasive? Even no, absolutely not. Um, repeated, independent, easily reproduced, cheap experiments, absolutely previous. And uh, but the lost ancient high technology tour industry probably won't acknowledge this because, just like with the circular saw marks and and these are other features and you know copper blades, I've done videos, experiments showing it myself how to do it. You can repeat it at home. It's very easy polishing to a flat surface very very easy to do with primitive techniques um, but if I were to admit you know the, the flat surface polishing the uh, saw marks or the cores then they have nothing and then their industry falls apart and then they don't have a profit and that's what's driving this it's it's profit it's money it's not truth like, you know you can call yourself a truth seeker all you want but when you're suppressing and, and failing to acknowledge truth you're not a truth seeker anymore you're a dogma you're you're you uh, guilty of the same dogma which you like to throw at the you know the establishment dogma 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 no dogma goes the other way the debate between lucas and petri really is irrelevant since experimentation has been done you can again you can do it and test it very cheaply easily for yourself at home unlike the you know research truth seeking researchers and for all their patreon and all their tall money and all the uh ancient aliens you know appearance money and the investment and the just the, the the huge industry which underlines it underlies this. They are not. <laughs> they are the establishment at this point. You know, stop calling yourself the, the the fringe truth seeker outsiders. You you own things now. You are you don't you can't call yourself suppressed um, truth seekers. You know anymore. That that that, that horse is bolted. Deep grooves are possible using ancient techniques that produce tapered cores. Same techniques shown. Um, in ancient Egyptian artworks of workshops and even in hieroglyphs going back to the earliest dynastic times. So it's it's in the archaeological record. It can be done, can be tested, just not a problem at all. Uh, so tapering pr absolutely proves primitive technology. It is not at all a signature of advanced technology or advanced machining. Just no, absolutely not. Uh, deep grooves do not require a fixed point or diamond level technology. No, absolute. This not true. Not uh, at all true. If you still want to sell this, then you're a con man, you know, at this point. But what about the polished surfaces? Well, we'll get that next because between the grooves, it, uh, they're polished. Now, it's, it, this is very easy to explain, and this has been you know, I've reproduced, and others have done it as well. So that'll be for the next part. But um, ancient aliens, lost ancient high technology industry, even though they might sort of say they're separate, they're, they make the same arguments in regards to the impossibility of lifting, cutting, drilling, uh, polishing. It's an incestuous group where one constantly supports the other to give the appearance of peer review. They never step outside and they never uh, address outside issues. They just claim that they're being suppressed, oppressed. Everyone else is, everyone else is wicked except for us. Um, if you ever step out of line, you know, from this, you're exiled from the club. I'm going to link a talk by Clive Prince and Lynn Pinknet in the description. They dared to do some basic fact-checking and they found themselves thrown out of this community for daring to seek and speak the truth um, in regards to objective claims. Not subjective interpret interpretations of what might this mean. We're talking about pure scientific fact. And if you dare to break this, you're exiled, or you're a shill for Zalbia. That's a classic one. Oh, you know, it's shill.
Okay, speaking of shills, uh, I've been, I'm very alternative fringe. That's basically the premise of my whole channel is to look at those type of things. I'm certainly not a defender of the mainstream sort of views, but uh, going back years, I've been, whether it's on lifting and other technologies, even early videos stuck before I did experiments myself, I was talking about primitive stone cutting technologies, and I learned very quickly that this is very unwelcome. Um, amongst the truth-seeking community and uh, given enough experience I've, you know I can usually spot the shills and there are so many shills in regards to this now um, this is just a one of the more recent random ones type of comments I've seen I am a retired union stonemason bricklayer and is, if there is one thing I know it's cutting stone with diamond encrusted blades and cooling cleaning lubricant these cuts were made with the tech I spoke of and beyond there is not a chisel on the market that could achieve these results, or, or I'd have had five of them, LOL. Well, th this channel might, nece might not necessarily be a shill, but it's, uh, it has all the hallmarks um, of them. Now, every, if a channel doesn't have content or, or doesn't have many subscribers, that doesn't mean they're a shill channel, but um, in these lost high technology you know, promoting videos, you'll always see in the comment, like, I'm an expert of this, I'm an expert of it, and this, this can't be done, it can't be done, it's impossible. Well, they're shills and they're, they're multiplying and it's deceptifying. Uh, if you repeat an eye, a lie often enough, it becomes accepted as truth. This is a common uh, propaganda tactic. So what you'll see is it's impossible to cut granite with copper. It's impossible to drill granite with anything less than diamond technology. It's impossible, etc., etc., because I'm a chemist. It's impossible, etc., etc. I'm a stonemason. I've dealt enough with these guys coming on, pretending to be who they are not, and uh, I, am, I was neither a chemist, I'm neither a stonemason, and you just ask them a few basic questions and you can spot these liars all over the place. And uh, I would have to, I'm assuming that the people who have these channels run several sock puppet accounts and infest their comment section with uh, uh, not necessarily just positive comments because that might necessarily be the case but they insert these I'm an expert therefore and it gives it the appearance of you know the, the appeal from authority or sorry the appeal to authority but these are just lies that are being repeated it's impossible to cut granite or andesite with copper it's impossible to drill granite with anything less than diamond technology it's impossible to drill it with no absolute rubbish and i can just say it because I've, I've i've done it it's so cheap and easy to do that it's just shameful that these um people who spend generate a lot of income spend thousands and thousands of hours of traveling and video editing and and twitter arting and doing all the other stuff and yet they haven't done a single hour not even sorry a single minute in regards to any sort of experimentation yet they promote this just falsehood what it really is is you could it's neurolinguistic programming you just keep repeating the same thing over and over and over again propagandists whether they're political or cults know this and use this very well it's a common marketing technique it's very effective it's very it's a very cheap psychological trick and so just um you know it, it is it is uh there is what they accuse Another Goebbels quote was to accuse the opposition of what you are doing yourself at that time. So again, the accusations of suppression, oppression, ignoring, all that. Well, that right back at you in regards to uh, these alleged truth seekers who just don't want to hear the truth. And in that case, it is that it's, it's, it's political and it's a cult. A cult, not a cult. It's a cult in that any information which does not fit the dogma is is to be ignored and anyone who suggests otherwise is to be vilified or ad hominemed and stuff like that so they've really set the tone in this and being at this for a while and and inside you know as an insider yet not not a, a card carrying member of the alternative history community i see this uh and it is so blatant and cheap and easy and just be cautious of of these and when you read a statement i am a chemist i am a mason i am a uh engineer just because, and because you'll, uh, the amount of either incompetence in regards to their skills or their you know professed trade, or just you know in, in outright lies, and it's just another common. In the comment section, you can influence people's thoughts more than the videos because most people will focus on the comments um, than than the 
information in the actual video, which again I've seen so often, like people leave comments, and it's like you obviously have not watched the video, you have obviously not looked at the sources, which I you know I provide spent time providing for you, and then you leave a comment saying it cannot be done. Well, it, they're shills, <laughs> and they're multiplying, and they're deceptifying. So that's another aspect in regards to this. It's not only about um, failing to acknowledge objective scientific facts. It's also about the promo to continue to promote these um, these lies, these deceptions. And classic example is now publicly funded Australian TV is now showing uh, the Prometheus uh, Entertainment Corporation um, Ancient Aliens, where they just tell blatant lies in regards to you know factual, verifiable scientific proofs. And uh, given their budget and and their influence, they obviously. You can just Google some of these things and the first page result will come up, but you don't have to spend hours looking into it, and yet they just keep promoting it and promoting it. So it's not just about dumbing down people um, because of this uh, uh, almost religious belief in these types of things. It's also there is an undercurrent here of deliberate lies and shilling and um, neuro-linguistic programming, again, especially in the comments. I'm guilty of it myself. The first thing I'll do is I'll go look at the comments and I often get um, brainwashed in regards to what the content of the video is. Now, you need to see the content of the video and then look at the links in the description. Even if it takes time, you've got to look at it um, and don't trust the comments. Uh, just don't and because they're shills and, and liars and, and, and also people who just firmly believe in it so much that they just repeat the lies that they've been told because it sounds you know i'm an architect i'm an engineer i'm a chemist i'm a stonemate why oh, he you know who would lie on the internet so therefore this guy must be true well it's not there is so much rubbish in regards to that watch the videos look look at the links and most important of all just do the experiments and test it for yourself uh just by doing this it's cheap and easy of you know yeah, I, I've learned so much with very little investment, literally less than a hundred dollars investment, um, and and just putting some hours into it. And you got you got to break yourself free. I was almost suckered into this um, because it sounded so authoritative, you know, like they really speak well. And they like, oh, this guy says he's a next. Yeah, you know, I've done the research for twenty years. Oh well, you know, who would like? Well, nah. Uh, and you and you do the fact checking in regards to this. Um, and you'll see again the the suppression, the oppression, the the censorship is is not by the so-called establishment. The ancient aliens esque is is now the establishment. You know, they have the power, they have the influence, they have the hours of media time and internet time being promoted heavily by the algorithms in YouTube. Uh, even you say I'm not interested, it's still there as well. So. Part of me that, but this rant has to be made because it is um, it is necessary to to understand this. Series. It's it's deeper than what you might think. And oh, that uh, Lynn Pinknett, Clive Prince lecture, uh, that's very telling um, in regards to uh, especially well, that's okay. David Childress, for instance, and and his links uh, in in regards to there. These people are the establishment. Gaia TV is owned by a very powerful hedge fund, and you'll see these Gaia TV ads at the front of all these types of videos. They are the establishment at at this particular type uh, point, and they're just dumbing people down, and they're doing it for cash. Um, yeah, and so that they go end of rant. But in essence, deep grooves not a problem. Tapering not a problem. The next part will be on the polished surface and how was this achieved? Well. I can't believe that this experienced machine man, uh, machinist. We'll get into that because it's just as cringe as the experiment, uh, alleged experiment, the only one to have been done by the entire lost ancient high technology community in regards to cause as well. It is very, very telling. And I already knew this before, but now looking and doing my own experiments and looking at what these people say, these are these are. It, this is not a delusion, or um, this is a open. This is an outright scam. You know, no other way to put it. Money, 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 money.